Hey everyone, this is Ken, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial, guys, on a modded Minecraft video. Now, what we have here, guys, is what's called a brine or an evaporation tank, which is phenomenal. Now, I want to thank my friend Swat because he really introduced me to this whole modded Minecraft thing, and there's just so much advanced things with this. Now, as you look inside, guys, what this does is it really creates a few different byproducts using water or brine to really make this happen. Now, if you put water in here, you're going to get a byproduct of brine. And if you put brine, you're going to get a byproduct of liquid lithium, which are all used to make or kind of used for other mechanics within the game. And it gets a little more complicated. Now, with this, guys, you've got a ton of information. As you can see, you got the height, the temps, and the production rate, which means what's coming out. As you can see, it is zero at the moment. Now, once I place a liquid tank here, depending on what I'm using, Right now, 120 millibuckets are coming out of it. And with this system is 100% self-efficient and self-powering. So you don't have to do anything. You don't have to worry about using solar systems or light. You can build this anywhere and you're good to go. Now, the cool thing about this also, you can make this at a max height of 18 blocks from ground up or three blocks tall, which is the shortest. So you really have some flexibility with options and so forth depending on how big you want to make this. Now let's jump right into it. Now you're going to need a four by six long spacing. And in this four by four spacing here, you're going to place what's called evaporation blocks. Now you're going to need one thermal evaporation controller and you can place that anywhere. Now, once you place that down, you're going to wrap that around with some blocks, well, evaporation blocks like so. And you're going to repeat that right on top again. Now, this is the cool thing. Once you place all the blocks and you place that last block right there, it's going to finalize itself by doing this whole cool particle effect. And you're going to notice the monitor even changed colors right then and there. So just letting you know that the system as is, is perfect. So it's a really great indicator. It lets you know that you actually did everything perfectly especially when you make this 18 blocks tall. And once again, guys, make sure you get this little particle effect to confirm that everything's cool and that the inside of this is empty and place nothing on top. Leave it open. So you don't do none of that. Just leave it like it is. And you're good to go. Now we're going to go right to the back and jump right into the kind of the heart of this whole system. And you're going to, in this corner, you're going to place a valve and three blocks up. You're going to place another valve on the opposite end. And it should look just like this. Now, this is where it kind of gets a little more complex. Now, over here, you can place a sink. And what I like to use a mechanical pipe. And you're going to need a configurator. You're going to click it right there on the side so that it pulls water out. And if you look in the controller right over here on the left hand side, you'll see water is kind of building upwards. Look at that, we're already getting brine and the temperatures are very slowly going up. I mean, it's super slow. Now, at this point, guys, you're going to use what's called a Eulorium block. And you're going to place that right over here with a crucible on top of it. And a tier two cobblestone gen on the side with an item duct in between. You're going to place that item duck right there. That's going to transfer items from point A to point B just to kind of get that starting to get that unlimited lava. Now, I like to use a wrench just to clean things up and kind of collect that on the side so you get the smooth kind of effect. And on the bottom here, you're going to use a magnetic generator. That's going to give that unlimited power. And on the side, you're going to use a fluid transposer right there. And you're going to make sure that's not connected. Trust me, you're going to be using this wrench a lot. And right inside, guys, you're going to make sure you go to the right hand side where it says the configuration and you're going to click it twice in the center and make sure it looks just like that just for now. Now, you're going to use a cingulum fluid pipe, well, fluid duct, and you're going to place a server right there. You're going to make sure you activate that by clicking the rest of the and putting ignore. If that makes any sense. 
Now, the reason why we're using the this specific type of fluid duct, because it does two things. It transfers not only lava to where it needs to go on both systems, but it also transfer power. So that power is actually going into this fluid duct, as you see on the left-hand side, a little bar is going up. And it does two things. So not only does it transfer the power and gives that unlimited power source, you're also giving the lava that's creating that power source to both. And it's just a win-win situation. Now, right over here, guys, you can place three item ducts like so and use that wrench to kind of clear this up because you don't want nothing touching that cobblestone gen. And just clear it up just exactly how I have it set up. Now, this fuel wood heater, make sure the face is facing outwards and it's in this exact formation. You see how it is? And the reason you want that, because once you place a server underneath it, you're going to go right inside of it. And this is where it gets a little tricky. You're going to place a bucket right over here and you're going to whitelist that by clicking that right there and changing it. And of course, you want to turn this always on. And the reason why, because you want only the bucket to come out and nothing else. And then you can place another item duck and use your wrench to kind of disconnect the center and place a servo right there on the side and make sure it's on so that it's always taking items out of the liquid joint going inside of that and vice versa. Now go right here to your configurator guys and make sure it looks just like this. Okay. See that right there? Put it in that, in that exact format. So you put the buckets in, it's going to send it right out into it and it's going to go inside. Now to prevent this cobblestone from going into the fuel heater, go on top, use your wrench. Like I said, to disconnect that and that would correct that issue right away. So the bucket's going to go in, heat up the heater automatically as well and go right back and create a consistent cycle all the time. Now what you're going to need is a basic thermodynamic conductor but you can really upgrade these parts guys and you're gonna place it right on top and what that does is simply transfers the heat from the heater right into the evaporation tank and once you look inside you're gonna see the temps are flying perfectly and you always want those to be extremely high so just to get, allow that some time to kind of build up and you're good to go guys the system is complete and you have this unlimited source unlimited power source no solar systems involved and all you need to do is add another valve anywhere you want to so that you could put that so that you could get the brime out or <laughs> whatever the case is now keep in mind guys depending on what kind of piping you use you're gonna get different results as you can see the pipe on top is moving a lot faster and the fluid is moving out quicker than the one on the bottom so keep that in mind when building this and using different pipings or fluid ducts or whatever the case is to get the stuff out. And the great thing is you have an unlimited supply. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy this and let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching. Remember to please leave a comment and to click that subscribe button if you want to join. Thank you.